Hi everyone, my name is Charlie and today I have a charity shop book haul. Really, I should call this a haul of books I've been keeping secret to go back a year, if not longer. I recorded a video in which I went through all of the unread books on my shelves and in that video I held up a supermarket bag full of books and I went through it and these were all books that I had acquired or borrowed from the charity shop. I ended up returning a lot of those books in my unhaul at the end of last year. On Monday I got some books from the shop again and I went to put them straight in this bag and I realised that I had developed the same problem again and that is that I have filled, I will show you, <coughs> I have filled this bag with books from the charity shop and I have forgotten what's in there. So today I want to go through this bag, see if I can remember actually picking up the books here and any story behind them and if I don't remember them we might be having a bit of an unhaul as well. But firstly I'm going to begin with the books that I discovered the other day at the shop. So we had a donation come in of tons and tons of books. You might remember last month I actually hauled 47 Anthony Trollope books because the entirety of the collection got donated to the shop and I bought it. It was an investment and so you think, Charlie, shouldn't you be holding off buying books? And yes, yes I should. But as I told my nephew when he asked me the same question, I said, do you have enough toys? And he quite soon gave up trying to persuade me that I had enough books on my shelves. Unfortunately, a lady's died and when a person dies and they are a book lover, oftentimes charity shops will end up with their collections. If they're a particularly interesting person or if they're of a certain age, you can be certain to find books you have never heard of before and me and a colleague often like to go through the books and just are thrilled by the diversity of the books in there and so here we had a collection of books that there were French books and um, I mean books written in French. We had a lot of non-fiction about the Russian Revolution or history or just obscure celebrities and politicians. It was a really interesting box to go through and unfortunately when we're seeing older books, if you were at a second-hand bookshop we'd be able to sell them but we are unable to sell older books and so I ended up picking out a few books that I really couldn't bear the idea of throwing away. That is what seems to happen with me. I get this idea that I can't bear the thought of throwing some books away and end up bringing them home with me. Firstly a book that we weren't going to throw away but was in this person's collection is 2666 by Roberto Bolaño. I was really surprised to see this. I have never seen this book donated before. And it's a book that I think most readers are interested in. An extremely long text that is unfinished because unfortunately the writer died. Yet people often talk about this book's brilliance. I want to see what all the hype's about. I'm not going to try and read it this year but it might be a project in the new year. Um, I don't even know what it's about. I think there's something of a detective story in there as well. Um, let's, shall we read? Shall we read? Shall I do that? Pick it up and go through? Oh, <laughs> I haven't seen these. The donor must have cut out images and has created bookmarks and well this one <laughs> seems to be a family photograph. Um, wow. That, that, that's that's unexpected. I, I love when that happens but yeah. Um, so this is a story that is told in five parts and is an epic novel from one of Latin America's greatest writers and apparently yeah it's mm, it talks about lost souls, people trailing a German author. Um, we'll see, we'll see. I, I, I know nothing about it, I just know a detective aspect and a mystery element to the story. Uh, next I got The Sixth Day by Primo Levi or Levi which I believe is a short story collection and they seemed a bit absurd and reading the back reminded me of the Maggie Gee book Dying in Other Words. I also found myself reminded of some of the stranger tales that I have liked to read short story wise and 
this edition was translated. It could have been translated by Giulio a Nordi editor, but it's not really telling me who the translator is. But yeah, this was a book that was somewhat old and when I saw it I really didn't want it to end up in our rag bag. Everyone's at home so you're going to be hearing a lot of noises in this video I should say. And um, then I got Amongst Women by John McGeehan. Um, so I actually don't know why I picked up this John McGeehan book. I think I meant to pick up a different one because we had a few donated. This says that it's following an old Republican who was a guerrilla leader in the War of Independence and now he's in his old age so maybe I picked it up for that reason because it... Mm. I don't know, I don't... <laughs> hmm, I don't remember that being the blurb. I think I picked up the wrong one there. And then I picked up Distant Relations by Carlos Fuentes and I don't know if this was translated. This was the part that got me because it reminded me of something that I might have read, The University. Um, which says, Dreams, reality and dim recollection are interwoven and suffused with haunting melodies, magic landscapes and lost childhood scenes. It is an exquisite tale of corruption and illusion and, illusion and of the relationship between the old world and the new. And can you believe this book only cost £2.95 when it was released? And nowadays I can believe that you probably would pay a lot more. 1982 this is edition from, and I just found out that it was translated by Margaret Says Peden or Penn. Um, so yeah, this just seems, again, a bit absurd and oh, it's been a long time since I read anything that really played with reality and that was some of my favourite stuff to read about 10 years ago and it's strange that I might talk about it one day how I think that YouTube and BookTube influenced the way I read and I think I stopped reading as many obscure titles and I think I became lazy in seeking out new titles so it's great to come across these. And then this wasn't from this lady, but in a stroke of luck last week, I came across the Robert Inkpen Illustrated Classics Collection. I've been showing my copy of The Jungle Book and A Christmas Carol, which are illustrated by Robert Inkpen. And this box set here, whilst it has another copy of The Jungle Book, which is a paperback, I, I mean, I adore the illustrations here. Let's see if I can find something to show. Well, I'll just show the tiger, <laughs> Shere Khan. Um, I just, yeah, so I was going to buy the box set, so I got the Jungle Book again. Treasure Island and The Wind in the Willows. I can't say, as I'm very interested in Treasure Island, it's never been a story to grab me, but I really, really liked the artwork in this one. With regards to The Wind in the Willows, this is a book that when I was younger, I kept accumulating copies and... I had an edition that was illustrated that wasn't this and then another one that was just your standard paperback as well as some books that were sequels like The Willows in Winter and something else but I don't own any of them anymore. I never read The Wind in the Willows yet I'm hoping this might be something to help me get through it because I really really do like the illustrations here. So I didn't mean to talk for that long about those books, those books I remember and I'm hopefully not going to shove into another bag. We now have to move on to the stuff that I have in this bag down here. I know that I definitely recorded a haul of these books and then deleted it because I thought I need to keep these books secret, but I've kept adding to it. I'm not sure what I'm going to find, but firstly, firstly we have The Golden Notebook by Doris Lessing. Doris Lessing is one of those writers where a friend of mine kept lending me her works when... I was younger, yet I never tried The Golden Notebook. And the reason that this book was kept for me from the charity shop is the colleague I was talking about before saw that it set mentioned book thrift and had a tag on and he used to work there. And then I asked, I thought he'd left it because of my mention of liking Doris Lessing in the past. I wish I had more of Lessing's books on my shelves, but I don't. I only read The Grass is Singing and A Brief History of a Descent into Hell. Was that what it's called? Briefing for a Descent into Hell. There's a lot of Lessing's work that I haven't explored and ought to have done. Next, I know I mentioned this and that is Imaginary Friend by Stephen Chbotsky. I got this because it had no dust jacket, so it was going to be thrown out. Here we go. Here's my copy of Knife by Joe Nesbo. Was never going to put this on my shelves. The Joe Nesbo books are some that I read and then I return straight away to the charity shop. <laughs> We're doing okay. I don't know why this is in here. This is Sleeping Beauties by Stephen King. I was actually already reading this. Um, I got... 
um, to chapter three, which is page 55. And the only reason I put this book down is because it was discussing a pandemic. And I will read Dane's book about pandemics, but I'm not about to do that for Stephen King. Ghost Story by Peter Straub. I'm meant to read this for Halloween. Um, I'm still going to read it. I don't care whether it's spooky or not. And then we have It, also by Stephen King, that I've pushed back to next year. The only thing I found scary about the film was the actual human being, so I'm finding that humans terrify me more than monsters. Great stuff. If I didn't know that before, I certainly know it now. <laughs> now, here we have the unauthorised version, Truth and Fiction in the Bible by Robin Elaine Fox. I don't follow any sort of religious following. The only thing I believe in is being kind. When I started reading the Bible, that is the only thing I took from it. I still one day plan on reading the Bible. I have always been interested in the history that inspired the Bible, any truth behind the historical events in there, and I think that this is going to give me more information that I didn't previously know. And also, I've never, I don't know whether anyone knows about this, but there was, I'm asking you to help me find it if you know where I could find it, there was a documentary years ago um, discussing um, truth and fiction within the Bible and showing what could have happened um, and how it might have been perceived based on people's faith at the time, but giving um, some historical evidence and context as to what was happening. And there was one episode that specifically focused on Moses, which also, side note, if you didn't know, Exodus is the chapter of the Bible that actually terrified me. No horror fiction has managed to terrify me as much as Exodus did. Just saying. Yeah, if anyone knows where I can see that documentary, great stuff, because I really did appreciate hearing more of the truth. I think I'm more interested in the history than the faith part, if that makes sense. Then we have The Lido by Libby Page. I feel like people were talking about this on YouTube, so I saw it and I thought it might be somewhat similar to a Doris book, so I borrowed it. Then we have Vernon Godlittle by DBC Pierre. The author, I, this won the man booker in 2003, but I first discovered the author with the book Ludmilla's Broken English when I was watching an episode of Newsnight Review. I was a very pretentious teenager and believed that I would be able to get into that book. It was a lie. The author does have something darkly humorous and I think I'm now at an age where I might appreciate that because of the level of cynicism that is etched deep into my bones. Uh, that book should be in here. Uh, then we have Midwinter Break by Bernard McClaverty that I got and planned to read in December and then I forgot was in here but I believe that this is a couple who are elderly and they're kind of in the rhythms of marriage but they're on holiday and the I think is it the cracks are starting to show in their relationship? We'll see. We're already in December now and I forgot to add that to my TBR. Then we have The Widows of Malabar Hill by Sujata Massey and basically they don't like American floppy editions in my shop so I got it and I have never read any mystery novel set in this part of the world which is 1920s India so I got it and I want to read it because I believe we have a female lead and I tend to always go for the detective novels in which a uh, woman is the lead, apart from the Harry Hall books. Ugh, they're full of masculinity. Didn't I already mention the Book of Dust by Philip Pullman? We all know that his Dark Materials isn't my favourite thing in the world, but I do have some nostalgia for it and I do occasionally like to reread Northern Lights. If I was going to reread any, that is the one that I go to. Um, but uh, yeah, not many people seem to like this, so I'm not holding out hope, but I borrowed it. Or did I pay for that one? That's the problem. I never remember now which ones I paid for and which one uh, and which ones I got. Oh, oh well. Oof. Then we have a man called Oove. Similar story. American floppy um, paperback. I read the author's other book last year. My grandmother sends her regards and apologises. And this edition here was translated by Henning Kosh, who I believe is a writer in their own right. We have an older protagonist, and we all know that I like an older protagonist. So, as you can see, I have yet to find any books here that I planned on unhauling, so this whole task hasn't gone well. And now we have some books I've never heard of before. I don't know whether any of you American viewers could help me out. But I have the Tide trilogy by Elizabeth O'Gilvie, which is High Tide at Noon, Storm Tide and The Ebbing Tide. These books 
all seem to follow the character of Joanna Bennett on an island. <sighs> Is it in Maine? It's in Maine. Now, when I saw these, I thought they might remind me somewhat of Olive Kitteridge by Elizabeth Strout because they're set around the same sort of setting. I've also discovered they seem to be set around the time of World War II and are about the island community on Bennett's Island. Has anybody read these? Does anybody rate them at all? They were going to be getting thrown out at the shop and I didn't like that idea. So I borrowed them, having no knowledge as to who the writer is or whether the books are any good. So if anyone I know has read these and liked them, then do let me know what you think. And finally, we have The Long War by Terry Pratchett and Stephen Baxter. I actually have two or three of the books from this long, this like long, whatever they are series, and I can't seem to see the others. Oh, I also have The Long Cosmos. Sorry, I'm looking around trying to find them um, because I've started picking these up when I see them in the hopes that I'll be able to read them once I've completed the series. So yeah, they're not going either, which means that this entire exercise of me hoping to go through this bag of books I've been keeping secret from you in order that I might be able to unhaul some didn't work out in my favour, did it? And I've got to put them all back in the bag because there's no room on my shelves. I didn't think this through. <sighs> So what do you think? Have you read any of these books? Should I prioritise any of them over others when we finally get into the new year? I should probably prioritise reading the stuff in this bag because Ugh. I didn't think that was going to happen. I thought I'd be able to unhaul quite a few but I'm still interested in them all. Oh, that was shocking. I'm sad about that. Anyway, if you do think I should prioritise any over others, then do let me know. If you've read the Elizabeth O'Gilvy series and you could give me a better idea of what they're about or some first impressions, then that would be great. I hope that you have got something out of this video besides sheer boredom. And until next time, that is all.